Welcome, everyone, to SI Media with Jimmy Trainer. Thank you so much for listening. Good to be back. We um, dropped two podcasts two weeks ago, whereas we did not do a new one last week during Fourth of July week. So uh, missed doing the pod. Glad to be back with you guys. And uh, we have a great show. Andrew Marshan from the New York Post. One of his periodic visits to the pod to discuss all the latest sports media news. Jeff Van Gundy getting let go from ESPN. What's going on with ESPN Radio? How Derek Jeter is doing at Fox? What's going on with Stephen A. Smith? Um, Hard Knocks. A lot of uh, NFL broadcast teams covered a lot. Uh, the New York Times and The Athletic, what went on with them this week. Covered all that with Marshan. And then Sal Licata joins me following Marshan for our weekly Train of Thoughts segment. Before we get to it, like I said, two podcasts from two weeks ago. Adam Shine from Sirius XM and CBS Sports Network was a guest. I did a little pod on the ESPN layoffs. Brian Curtis was on recently. Scott Van Pelt, Chris Mad Dog Russo, Pat McAfee, all those in the archives. So check them out. If you're not a subscriber to SI Media with Jimmy Trainer, hit that subscribe button and uh, leave a review on Apple. We'll read it in a couple of weeks. All right, let's get to this week's show right now. Andrew Marshan from the New York Post on the latest sports media news, followed by Sal Licata and our weekly Train of Thought segment, all right here, right now on SI Media with Jimmy Trina. All right, joining me now for his uh, periodic visit on the SI Media with Jimmy Trina podcast from the New York Post. Of course, his own podcast, Marshan and Oran, New York Post sports media columnist, writer, journalist, all that stuff. Andrew Marshan. Andrew, how are you? I'm well. How are you doing, Jimmy? I'm hanging in there and uh, slow time for sports, but not for sports media. It's been a busy couple of weeks. Um, it never slows down in sports media. It's the beauty of it. Do you think it's the beauty of it? I mean, I wouldn't mind it being slow for a little bit. Well, if you have to, I mean, they want me to write often, as often as possible. Oh, yeah. So if uh, you know, you can't find out things, then, you know, it's not as, uh, it's just, the, the really, the reason is it's just, it, I think the one thing about it is that there's always free agency. There's always moves. And right. I think people really like that the most. Well, let's start with the biggest move. Um, it's a little old, but I want to get into it just because I haven't really done that um, too much, which is Van Gundy. Um, you reported it first name out of the gate when ESPN had their layoffs a couple of weeks ago. There's been a lot of speculation since from people who think this was not just an ESPN move, that maybe the NBA and Adam Silver decided to step in because Jeff is often critical of refs and other things. Um, I have my perspective on it, but let me hear from you first on that. So when I found out that Van Gundy was out, I did look into that. Um, ESPN had a statement that they made, but they weren't on the record anywhere. Uh, sources stressed to me that it wasn't the NBA. So let me put that out there first. However, I, do I think that Adam Silver gave a directive and said, let go of Jeff Van Gundy? I don't think so. There's no reason to believe that. There's no evidence to believe that. Um, do I think it's very possible that the NBA, which is very heavy handed in terms of what they think of coverage, uh, had made it clear that they weren't the biggest fans of Van Gundy, who you said incorrectly uh, you know, criticizes officiating, will say things about the NBA in terms of the product, et cetera. Uh, that they didn't love it. And, you know, if Adam Silver sitting next to Bob Biger, or he's talking to ESPN chairman uh, Jimmy Pitaro or the president of content, Burke Magnus, that they made it clear. And here's a case where they're trying to reduce salary uh, and, you know, probably going to move Doris Burke in there, you'd think. Um, that, uh, um, that, that, you know, one plus one kind of equals two there. That said, there's no evidence that there was a directive. Um, and we can't really even say for certain that that's what went down. Uh, but as I said on our podcast with John, I, to me, it's such a head scratcher. I heard about it during the NBA finals. I actually looked into it. It would have been a good story right before game five because that's when I was looking into it. Um, but, uh, you know, couldn't first off, the list was changing. So you had to be careful. Um, you know, people are on the list. They're off the list. And so... Uh, you can't, you know, and you also, I felt like, um, I didn't report on anybody unless they were told because things first off change. And secondly, 
I think ESPN should be what was the, was the one who should be telling these people the information. Right. I you know let's let's say you want to buy into the cons- not you but the general you want to buy into the conspiracy that maybe the NBA had a hand in it or maybe even ESPN said you know what you know we hear from the NBA about Jeff let's just move on from this. The, the the ironic thing about it is, I mean, there's no bigger champion for the NBA than Jeff Van Gundy. And this is a guy who's a lifer. You know, you know this, the stories with the Knicks slept in his Volkswagen or whatever shitty car he had at the time. Like, the guy is all about the NBA. So to try to spin it as he's not good for the league because he calls out nonsense sometimes is is kind of rich to me because I don't think you'll find anyone who's a bigger fan of the NBA than Jeff Van Gundy. First off, and most importantly, I have a Volkswagen. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't. I don't that, that's a shitty car, a Volkswagen. Well, whatever his car was, I, yeah, I don't think you know this. That, there's the famous story where he would sleep in his car when he was the Knicks assistant head coach or whatever. It's like one of those like stories, Volkswagen's like you know, are shitty cars. All right. Well, I, All right. whatever. I, yes. I didn't. I, yes. I don't know anything about cars, so. All right, fair enough. Sorry, yeah. that's okay. I'm not, I really don't care, but I just thought it was yeah. funny. Uh, that you said or that. a Hyundai, whatever it was. I don't yeah, know I think. Said. Yeah, maybe I'll so, look it up while you speak. OK, sounds good. Uh, yeah, look, I, I I think the better your broadcast is, the better it is for your games. I think uh, announcers, you know, we just went through it with the uh, Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, Tom Brady, Romo, all that in the NFL in terms of these big name announcers getting so much money. Um, I think even you watch sports if the announcers are really good, it enhances the enjoyment of it. It makes it bigger. And ESPN has had trouble with their booths. Uh, they finally had to pay a uh, Buck and Aikman more than $30 million a year uh, to solve Monday night. They've struggled on Sunday night baseball, college football. I think Herb Street's very good. Fowler's not great as a play by player. Uh, they, they've struggled. Uh, you know, when you look at the NBA, though, that's been something that's been strong for 17 years. Van Gundy's done nearly 100 uh, finals games. Breen's done 100 or more than 100. Um, and so, yeah, I don't see it. I don't know why you would do that personally. Um, I get it. You know, Van Gundy took a pay cut a couple years ago. Uh, so I mean, I'm sure he's making millions. I don't know the exact numbers, but they he wasn't making as much as he once was because I think it was a significant pay cut. Uh, and so uh, I would want Jeff Van Gundy in the booth. I think he's, again, it's like such a weird, you know, there's just weird conversations all over the place in sports media. But to me, uh, he might be and very well is the best game analyst on TV. So to, to I agree. decide to get rid of him doesn't make right. sense to me. Same here. Um, it, it's hard to understand it on any level. I And I guess the question then is, you know, if you're of the belief that maybe the NBA had a hand in this and you're saying you haven't heard anything like that, that would be good news in terms of if Jeff wants, you know, if TNT is interested, if NBC is interested when they get the package, obviously a streaming service is going to come into this at some point. So you would think if the NBA is not, they don't have their hands dirty in this, Jeff will land at his feet pretty easily. Yes and no. Um, I think the yes part of that is he should uh, land on his feet. Like if I were Amazon or Apple two years, if you're, they're able to get the rights to a team, uh, to, to games, and Jeff Van Gundy's out there as a analyst. Yeah, I, I think especially in a three-man booth. I mean, even a two-man booth doesn't really matter. He would be, I'd want to get Jeff Van Gundy. I, I mean, has TNT not try to do a Harlan, Jeff Stan booth yes i mean i think i mean look i think with all these things and just like not just talking about van gundy but i mean we've seen this in the past with uh with these layoffs is you know how you know how much flexibility does he have is he able to just go work someplace um i think that's always a question in these situations which is i've always found pretty gross um when i get it like people the average person is going to say well if he's getting paid still then why does he care i mean all these people, Jeff Van Gundy, you look at it. I mean, he coached the Knicks, you know, probably made good money. Coach Houston, I think, made great money. Yeah. Has been at ESPN for 17 years. Let's say, let's just say he's averaged $2 million. That's a year. Let's say he averaged two. I'd say probably a little more on the average, but let's just say he averaged two. That's 34 million. So he's got plenty of money. Um, but that said, um, 
you know, so so he doesn't necessarily need the money, but so if people say, well, he's getting paid, so who cares if he can't work? I mean, I think people want the action. They want to be involved. They he wants to just, work. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. um, you know, and then if they limit you, that's where it's like when we talk about cast members and Disney and all that, and they try to, you know, act like it's a big family. Well, you know, put your actions where your your words are, because if that's the case, and I get it, there's legalese, there's financial write-offs that, um, that are business, uh, but... Uh, don't give me the one hand, you know, we care about everybody. And on the other hand, if someone wants to work in any of these cases and you're not going to allow them with an offset or something, I don't see how that makes sense. I don't see how that's helping. I don't find it very human. Yeah. You're going to let the guy, you're going to let the guy go and then say he can't go to TNT because he has years left on his contract. That would be, you know, pretty Bush league. I think Yeah, he is the I mean, best analyst in the these, game. I mean, you know, Keyshawn, you know, Jalen, you know, all these people right. who have money left on their deals, I, that's, you know, I, I think they, that's the circumstance. I could see ESPN doing it with Jeff more than those guys, especially if he goes to TNT, where TNT is already blows MB, you know, ESPN guess, out of the water. I guess, but you're choosing, they chose not to have him on their team. So, I mean, I agree. Like, I, well, I think his brother's there now. I agree. But, there. but I guess, but they, they fired him. So, TNT. Yeah, I, no, ESPN fired right. him. Right. My point. Right. I'm saying ESPN should let him go to TNT. Yes, um, they should. So, yeah, yeah I agree with all. you. Yeah. yeah. And the story is uh, it was a it was a 1995 Honda Civic okay. that he was driving as Nick's coach. And then the car got destroyed. There's this famous story from like something in the where it was parked by an airplane and the engine went off and the car it's it's a famous story you could google it just All right. but it's Jeff Van Gundy with his 1995 Honda Civic so I apologize for disparaging Volkswagen um, Are they a sponsor? No, I don't think so. so. Right, um and you mentioned Doris maybe getting that job. Where where is Mark Jackson in all this do you think? Well, I mentioned on our podcast um I, I do think Doc Rivers is in play here. Um, you know, I mentioned that in the original story when Van Gundy was let go, um, a couple of things with Doc Rivers, obviously has a huge broadcast background. Um, you know, he hasn't done it in a while because he's been coaching for a while now, won a championship with the Celtics. Um, very tight with Mike Breen. I think the NBA likes Doc Rivers. So but Doc Rivers is not going to come cheap, which is, well, the one thing is he has an offset. Like, I don't know how much money the Sixers are still paying him. But there's a chance that maybe, you know, he doesn't need as much money or, you know, that that's that there is that um, scenario um, possibly. I don't know that 100 percent, but I know that they owe money, but I don't know exactly if that's that's how that could work out. But you're right. It makes no sense to go pay Doc Rivers a lot of money when you just got rid of Jeff Van Gundy. Right. Um, and, you know, and obviously, if you're doing that, I do think I would expect Doris to be in the mix. So. You know, does, what happens with Mark Jackson then? So I think that these are still a lot of, uh, there's still some, a lot of chairs that still have to be filled and figured out. Yeah. Um, and one of the other things, just to sort of recap the, the layoff situation, I had discussed this on the podcast when it happened. Time has passed, but I want to get, I want you to weigh in here because there are still so many people who either blame Pat McAfee or somehow think, you know, Pat McAfee is responsible for some of the layoffs. And I don't think one has anything to do with the other. Let me get your opinion on that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. One has nothing to do with the other. Um, look, ESPN, they're signing people, you know, as we speak. It's not like they're getting rid of everyone. Um, and the McAfee deal, which I've reported, is for five years and for around. Eighty-five million dollars. Um, the uh, they think they're going to make money on that deal, so that's why they did it. Um, they want to get younger, and they like McAfee a lot. I think, uh, from what I'm told, you know, Jimmy Pitaro and McAfee have a real good relationship, um, and I think that had you know something to do with it for McAfee to feel comfortable to go to ESPN, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, when you when you look at it. Um, I get it why people think that. And I know like I was, uh, I came off vacation to, to work on that story. So I wasn't really checking social media 
very like I was just trying to focus on reporting the story and getting back to the beach. The, the guy was trending on Twitter. The he was day trending the on Twitter. Happened. I did see that. Yeah, yeah I did see yeah. that. Then he had a reflection at the end of uh, the that Friday. But yeah. Like, one has nothing to do with the other. I mean, that's right. the internet, though. Like the internet, right. the truth isn't really like at the core of like social media or the internet. It's true. Uh, you try to do that as a reporter, um, but uh, and I and I, I mean I like I'm not putting myself in that no like not trying to act above anything, but I'm not in that category. But you do like the truth doesn't like a lot of times even stories that I write, and then it's very nice that other people write about them, you know, and give credit. Um, but uh, sometimes they don't do it correctly and you can't do anything about it that's the internet right right well did you hear mcafee when he was on this podcast he gave you credit for his for you know getting a deal yeah i did listen to that yeah that was very nice yeah he's he's been very nice i appreciate that from pat now he says other things that i don't agree with because i uh but for for the most part he's been very nice so i appreciate that i also think he says your name wrong he He does but i like marshawn marshawn i like that you know what i'm not marshawn lynch I know when I was at ESPN, people say it wrong too. Even yeah. when I was on like the air, we're on the same team. Uh, but I kind of like how he says it. It adds yeah. to it. He also can't say he, he said John Oran's name wrong as well. We kind of, but not it. as bad as Russo. No, oh, yeah, that was John, Russo was the one who really John Orad, Orad, John Arad, whatever he's. Oh yeah, we used to do that. The the, uh, um, I I do have actually one more thing. This sort of it's not related to Laos, but is related to the real Laos. Obviously, you mentioned Keyshawn and Max Kellerman will let go. Is there any plan for ESPN Radio? Are they are they giving up on morning radio? What what, what do we know about what's going to happen? Because it's we, you know, you and I are here in New York. Yeah, I mean, ESPN Radio in New York is so completely irrelevant compared to the. I mean, the fan is just this machine, and I guess it's like that in a lot of big markets. But Mike and Mike did have success in the mornings on ESPN Radio across the country, so. Now it's almost like their NBA show where they can't seem to get it right. What's the status, the future of ESPN radio specifically two in the mornings? Well, number one, Mike and Mike were very successful, but yep. not in New York. Okay. They right. were never really right. that successful in New York. I meant nationally. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think that they're, they don't value radio. They, they, if they value anything, it's, um, audio, but it's podcasts, uh, and they don't value radio. They're, they've gotten rid of, most of their owned and operated stations and now in new york they don't they it's a weird arrangement where it's somewhat espn and then somewhat good karma radio um which uh is craig karmazin's company uh out of chicago uh and so it's same case so they, they, they they're definitely not in on radio will there be a morning show yeah there'll be a new morning show uh they will not make as much money as Keyshawn jay williams and max which when you added up all their salaries now they all did other things as well but was in excess of 10 million dollars combined you know um pretty probably three 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 five yeah so it's about yeah, probably 11 million ish uh for the three of them um it's not that's not going to be like that i think it's going to probably be some kind of younger crew um that they they put in there and then that's and they don't even clear new york or la anymore like in new york it's local which they should have done about 25 years ago and you know that's how you compete with fan in new york um but uh yeah so it's not it's not important it's not important to them that's obvious this may be a really 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 stupid idea and tell me if it is but if cost cutting is such a issue and they can't get the radio show right in the morning why not just do like just have get up as the radio show will it not translate because you need the video of like i don't know dan orlovsky breaking down film or something but it seems like that would just be a simple solution it could work the problem with that just you know i know you're just saying i mean i guess you could put something else from six to eight right that show comes on at eight from eight to ten so the morning shows are generally six to ten um I mean, you could do that. It's, and it might work. I mean, there, look, there are TV shows that, you know, I think the most famous, probably one from this is back in the day. Some of the younger listeners won't even know what we're talking about. They'll just know how Imus's career ended. But Imus's show at the end, when it was on MSNBC, was kind of like a TV show slash radio show. Now, that's what I, if I were FS1, by the way, and I've written this, that's what I would do with Carton. I'd make it more of a radio show on TV um, than what they're doing now, which is sort of kind of the cookie cutter. TV way with a topic topic. I would do more of a radio show on TV. And then uh, I think it's smart. They might try to simulcast it around the country. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's not the worst idea. All right. I'll take that. Um, 
I did not watch the All Star Game. I, I saw the int- I saw the introductions, and then I was out. I tweeted. I know you tweeted about the hideous uniforms. I mean, I don't even. Uh, you're literally preventing your audience from knowing who the players are. It's so dumb on every level, but whatever. But my question is, have you watched any of Jeter on Fox? And do you have any sort of review? I know he did the, I guess there was a London game yep. and then he did the all-star game. I didn't watch either of those games, the pregame show. So I don't, I haven't seen him. I saw one clip um, on Twitter where he talked about, he thinks the Astros are the best team in the AL. So I thought that was him basically continuing his feud with Brian Cashman, which I love. But tell me, give me your Jeter television Fox review so far. So yeah, I've watched. Um, I thought, I think he's been pretty good. Like he's kind of, I thought he'd be pretty good. I know there's a lot of people say he won't say anything. Um, he's, Jeter's a pro. And so like, I, and I was told he was engaged, like going into it. Um, and I think that kind of checks the box. Like I, he wants to be successful. He's been pretty much successful at everything he does. Um, he does have personality. Um, you know, w- we in the media didn't see it as much. That final year, I covered him. Um, he was much more open and kind of appreciated it and also was setting up his post-playing career, I think, a little bit. But got to see a little bit more of the Jeter you heard about but didn't see as much uh, because, you know, it, his greatest quality to me uh, when people talk about you know, some people don't think he's a great player. Like, I don't know what the heck they're talking about. Like, you know, like some people try to like degrade him somehow because he played for the Yankees. And if he played for the Yankees, all, right. all right, but he did play for the Yankees. But his greatest quality to me was his just commitment to team and his attitude, which when your best player and your captain has the attitude of you're either playing or you're hurt, that trickles down. No excuses for anybody else. Um, and so I think I've seen that in terms of his commentary. That's kind of... There was like Jeter things. That's what, in, especially the London shows. Um, and then he has, he has a good sense of humor. Um, you know, it's a little bit of the prettiest girl in high school stuff where he's Derek Jeter. So he says something moderately funny and then everyone's cracking up. Um, oh but- my God. I saw that. I, d- I did see that one clip where like Ortiz gave him a Red Sox jersey. It was so painfully unfunny and they're laughing like they're at a Chris Rock show. It was so embarrassing. I felt so I, as a Derek Jeter lover, I, I cringed when I saw that clip because I'm like, this is how is that funny? Like, oh, he has a Red Sox jersey. It's where it's so not funny or creative. And they were laughing like it was the because it's A-Rod, of course. So he thinks it's funny. And well, and the, the other thing I'd love brutal. to get your perspective because you have a you know different than mine. And like Jeter, I think I got along with him okay, but they we definitely weren't like tight or anything like that you know obviously we knew each other but he wasn't tight with anyone in the media uh i mean he was had he? a little more uh, i mean not really where it's like um it was a i'd say i'd say he had some better relationships with, like it's just one of those things for me when you're covering a lot of people you know every day you kind of i'm not like a psycho fan in any way i'm not gonna right. name names of people who are but i'm just not there like to kiss their butts like i just right. can't slide in my genes um so like i try to have a good relationship with people but i just can't do that um so i think he did have some relationships where it seemed to be a little bit maybe stronger and i don't know if it paid off in any way right. um for those people so what did you want to ask me yeah so my my question for you though you know he basically did some hot takes the other day i mean he said that yankees should uh trade for juan soto did you ever mm-hmm. think you'd see Derek jeter doing hot takes absolutely not That surprised me when I saw that. But I just, listen, it was very clear in his documentary that, I mean, they could say they've patched it up and everything's great now. And to use a Chris Russo phrase, everything's kumbaya. He clearly does not like Brian Cashman. I mean, I think that was so clear. So there's a part of me that's wondering if he's trying to sort of put some pressure on Cashman or needle Cashman or, you know, because Cashman's done an atrocious job. And Jeter's basically saying the Astros are better and the Yankees need to get Juan Soto. And Brian Cashman's well, relying on Jack Bauer and Greg yeah. Allen. The last contract negotiation got ugly. Yeah. I mean, you don't like Cashman, but he was totally right in that. You don't keep paying Derek Jeter because he's Derek Jeter. He's not Derek Jeter anymore. You got to pay him what the market said. And it got ugly and it got public. And Jeter doesn't like that. Um, and he wants to control everything. And you know, that's, uh, 
you know, that's business. Um, and so uh, that's where it really got bad. And then they no. kind of patched things up apparently at the, get the hall of fame. But, uh, but yeah, I do think there's some, um, some ill will, but they made a trade. They made the big yeah. stand trade that worked out great for your team. Oh, we'll be paying for that for a long time. Um, and, and he's going to be back for the postseason on Fox. Now we don't see him again until the postseason. That's a good gig. It's a good hilarious. gig. Yeah. It's a good gig. It's a good gig. You it's a, a lot very of money. good gig. Yeah. You got that right. Um, let's talk about a little bit about the New York times and the athletic. I, I get the outrage. I mean, you're there one day as a sports reporter and then they're moving you off the beat. But I I find it hard to believe that people are so shocked at the move only because why did the Times buy the Athletic? Like you, no matter what they said at the time, you had to think like, okay, they just bought the Athletic. It they're going to move it in at some point as their main. It, it was horrible the way it goes down, and I, you know I I saw the day before that the. People at the time sent a letter asking for some clarity. So they must have heard the whispers. They must have known it was coming. And it's horrible. It's horrible when that happens to you at your at your job. But I feel like once they acquired the athletic, the writing was on the wall. Is am I crazy for thinking that? No, I think it's obvious, right? Yeah. I, I 100% agree with you. I mean, I think the athletic has, I think, 400 reporters. I don't know if that's true. Like, it's not. That's the number that I've heard. Um, let's just say they have 400 reporters. Um, uh why would you have another 45 covering sports if you have 400 or specific teams? That said, I think the bigger thing is if you have a Rory Smith, who's an excellent soccer writer um, in Europe, uh, Tyler Kepner, who's one of the best baseball columnists in the country, destined for you know the writer's ring, wing of the Hall of Fame, uh, Dave Waldstein, um, who's a tremendous reporter, uh, why they you can't figure out how to get them involved in sports still is beyond me. Now I get they have a strong union, yeah. and so you know they're trying to do this thing where they um are not gonna you know they're gonna they're not gonna be you know the athletic people aren't in the union, so I think that's where it becomes complicated. And I still think there's a fight to be had about that because it right. does seem like they're usurping the union. Um, but I just think like the you, you're not valuing your people. That's what my issue is with it. And um, and I get it. Like, And I also think like a lot of these companies act like they're different. And like they just do the same things over and over. And they expect the rest, of, especially like journalism. I think sometimes we act as if like the rest of the world should act a certain way. And then when it like knocks on our door, it's like, well, we're, we're going to act another way. And I think in this case, that's that's um, something that if the Times was doing a story on this. They'd be like, what the heck? You know, or if there's an editorial column, they'd be, it'd be like, killing them and then they're doing they're, they're doing the same thing the biggest issue and i you know it sucks but at the end of the day people want to say journalism and dead and journalism this and mm -hmm. we need to do good journalism and no one disputes that but at the end of the day it's still all a business i mean all these people are trying to make yes. money that they're trying to make money before they're trying to do journalism and people don't want to accept that and people think that's the wrong way to go about it. And I'm not disagreeing if that's your, but the reality of the situation is whether it's the New York Times, the New York Post, Sports Illustrated, ESPN, the, all they're trying to do is make money. That's what they're trying to do. So I understand people want to wave the flag for journalism and it's important and I'm not disputing any of that, but the people who own these companies just want to make money. They really don't care about, you know, being Walter Cronkite of 2023. Well, and the other thing is like that people are acting as if um, the Times is like getting out of sports. They got out of right. sports like 15, 20 years ago when they stopped really covering things. They actually just got back into sports. That's actually the, really the story. If you look at it, take it, take a step back. And they just hired, four, let's just say that number, 400 reporters to cover sports. So like sports is dying. Well, no, they just actually put a commitment. Right. You know, they don't compete with us anymore. You know, we cover New York. We really cover the, the sports. We really cover the teams. They stopped doing that a long time ago. But I do think, as you, you mentioned a little bit, I mean, the time should do every single thing in their power and work tirelessly to get these 35 people positions at the athletic 
and keep them in sports. You don't want yeah, to boot the union these people is the issue, them. right? Like, I right. Think that's I get it. I get the it. Problem. You put them in the union, then everyone else at the athletic gets in the union, and then whatever that means in terms of benefits, etc. Yeah. Um. So they don't. They want to avoid that, and that gets back to your main point: is they're about making money. Right. And it, right. I mean, well, everyone over here wants to cry about journalism. And then when the Northwestern story comes out, people, you know, there were a couple of people, Tim Brando, Danny Cannell. Oh, this is terrible. He's a good guy. I need more information. I mean, you couldn't do a better job than those kids at the Northwestern paper. I mean, they yep. got it all. Two different yep. stories, you know. Yep. So everyone's all over the place. Um, I talked about this a few weeks ago with Brian Curtis. And since I've discussed it with Curtis, I feel like it's gotten even more um what's the word like, not out of control but more hard to believe and it is the i it's espn likes to keep their people under wraps but everyone knows that at espn like with every company there's the jordan rules and certain people can do certain things what Stephen a does on his podcast it's it blows my mind away every week because i'm thinking about like He's interviewing Chris Christie. He's talking about affirmative action. He's yes. um, breaking down Tom Brady and Kim Kardashian. And one, I, you know, listen, I give him credit. Like if you have the power to do what you want, that's sort of the ultimate. I do wonder if it's eventually going to come. Like, I understand it's a separate deal, his podcast, and it's not affiliated with ESPN. You're, you're plugged in. Have you heard any rumblings? Like our ESPN executives, like this is bad or what's going on here or because it's am it's amazing how far out Stephen A has gone. So I think Jimmy Pataro's ESPN is a little bit different than John Skipper's ESPN, and maybe that's a sign of the times, and maybe not the people. But uh, I think that you know there was a time where ESPN didn't want their people to do anything else; that they just were going to pay them, and then they wanted them for TV, they wanted them for radio, audio, and they wanted them to write for them, and they didn't want anybody. Now they were the were the how payment is working, you know, you, you, you want to make more money? Well, yeah, go do something else. Right. Have your main uh, chair with us on first take and MBA and all that. Uh, and then um, you can make extra money and they can't tell them what to say, you know, with this, with the other things. I do think what's interesting about Stephen A now is that, you know, he has a lot of topics that he talks about, but I think the number one topic is Stephen A, which is, <laughs> A good topic. Number two is right NBA, and I'd say number three Stephen A. Number four <laughs> is like random, um, you know, pop culture uh, things. Right, uh, and then five might right. be Stephen A. So, yeah. uh, and good for him. And Stephen A, I I respect Stephen A because of his Me too. work ethic. Uh, I do think, like, I think what gets mistaken. I know people, the one that even I think you, they get on Skip Bayless because Skip is kind of very negative in how he does it. I don't. I don't say one word about him. To me, he doesn't well, exist. Is, That's how I. Yeah, well, exactly. All right, so whatever, he, I think so, he's a. Fa I think he's fake. It's not a real show. It's not. He's not doing a real. Whatever thing. it is, whatever it yeah. is, though the 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 word that you use is correct. It's a show. Like they're not doing like your columns different than what I do, but but like they're not do like I, you're still like fact based column, right? Um, so. And I'm like a reporter. That's what I am like. Right. And yes, I have a podcast. And so you do. But but it's all like to me, like my what I'm trying to do is tell you what's really going on. Like, that's my job um, in whatever forum. Stephen A. And like and we, you know, we both love Russo. Like, right. Is that like if you're listening to them to be like, this is exactly what's going on in the world of sports, then you're an idiot. Because again, not that like Stephen A, especially like with hoops, and I think he has some connections with you know he he's a big time guy. He's got some connections where he finds out some things, so he's informed on a lot of things. But like, it's just to be entertained. Like that's the thing that I think people right. kind of when they get so hot and bothered about this, I get it. Like you can not like it, you can really hate it, whatever. But they, everyone's entitled to their opinion. But like, it's just. I just you don't look to these people like they're like the gold standard of what they're going, what they're saying. And so um, and so for Stephen A and to get to your main point. Uh, yeah, I think it's different now. I think uh, and I think Stephen A has aspirations outside of sports. Yeah. And I think ESPN and Disney are going to support that. Um, and so uh, in the hopes of keeping them in the family as well. So they, they realize Stephen A is he's not bigger than ESPN, but he's very big. I'm laughing at what you said about Russo and because like his show two weeks ago, he was basically saying that Roger Goodell and every NFL owner has DraftKings and FanDuel's account and, and, and they wager on these games when they suspended all the players. I mean, again, like you said, it's entertaining and 
that's sort of, you know, how you have to take it. Speaking of entertaining, or used to be entertaining, I cannot believe all of the hullabaloo over hard knocks. Mm. Like, to me, it's so irrelevant these days. And there's all this, because I guess the Jets made a big stink that they didn't want to do it. And now they're being forced to do it, quote unquote. But I, I don't see this as a major play. Now, listen, it'll get attention this year because Aaron Rodgers will get all this attention and he'll complain about getting all the attention. But I mean, I don't, I don't consider hard knocks this big thing in the sports world anymore. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. I think it does speak to the uh, power of, Schefter and others who cover the NFL and then in this case cover media who have kind of talked about hard knocks a lot, which I think the NFL likes. Um, and so uh, Schefter was the one who had the, you know, the final, you know, that the Jets are going to be on it. But everyone um, knew that anyway. They did. But I mean, he whatever he there's a I agree, but he did push it across that goal line and say that's happening. Um, and so. And I guess, but did they announce it then after? I'm not sure. If I don't know. It. Like I, when I saw the Schefter thing, I didn't, to me, it wasn't like, oh, look at Adam Schefter breaking this because everyone knew it was the Jets. Yeah, I guess so. But so anyway, so that's why I think the hub, hub of Baloo, yeah. I do think, I mean, obviously in New York, we're interested because it just gives you a little behind the scenes and the best hard knocks was what, 2010 when Rex Ryan did it. Um, and so I think that that's kind of part of it. And I think, I mean, they did get Aaron Rodgers. It is a big story. And right. You know, we could say you're right about the Aaron Rodgers um, uh, circle of, I don't know if it's grief or what the word is, but like the, you know, the, the, the how it will go. Right. Um, like you already know, like they're going to show a clip of him, like talking about like his support of like RFK and then the blogs will all aggregate it and then he'll complain about, you know, being canceled. Or like you just know that's what's going to happen. I it's, think so. But it's the NFL. I don't know. I think they might take RFK off. Maybe. But you're right. He'll do. He'll say something. Right. There'll be something that he'll say was out of context, and da da da, and then yeah. be on the back page, and then it'll be. Which is good for the show. It's good for the show. Yeah. I, here's the other thing about it. Everyone says they don't want to be. They don't. This is kind of getting back to where you're talking about with Stephen A. and Skip and those guys. This is all a show. Like we like the NFL, and I know the coaches act as if like they're going to war. But and it is important. Don't get me wrong. It's right. a billion dollar business. These people are all fighting to make millions of dollars. It's important. I'm not like trying to act like it's not important. But the idea that if you had cameras and hard knocks, you can't like be successful. Like they're right. so evasive. It's not like they are going to just show everything. It's watered down. Even if it right. sometimes can be very good and they make it very dramatic. NFL films is part of the NFL. They're not right. going to make it so it's like um, they're not going to like like if someone's like uh, they get a right. uh, video of someone doing steroids. They're not going to show that. It's like that's not going to be right. like. It also, the, it's not going to happen. Your your film your your team being filmed in August has no impact on like when the Jets are playing the Bills in November. Okay, like Robert Sala botching timeouts in the fourth quarter has nothing to do with whether his team is on hard knocks or not. So it's a ridiculous. A complaint that oh we can't be on hard knocks we can't be on hard knocks and even talking to the media like i always say right. like like belichick he gets a pass because you know with brady he's been tremendous um and he's one of the best defensive coaches ever uh and you could argue one of the best coaches ever but the fact that he doesn't say anything i, I think has nothing to do with it that he's like a jerk with the media he's allowed to be a jerk because he wins right 100 percent. win you right. know eric mangini tried it Worked right. for a little bit when he won a little bit and then he lost and then he lost the media and lost everything. A hundred percent. Last thing. Are you on threads? I am. How's it going? Love threads. I'm just really, uh, no, it's too much, Jimmy. I, I said it the first day I was back from vacation on vacation. I got a threads account because you do got to be early to these things to get your count up because it's very important for your career. Even though these things are terrible for the companies you work for. Um, oh, I'm screwed. And, why you're on it? I'm not on. I'm not getting no, my no, no, count no, no, up. No, I'm not no, on it's there. good for SI. SI should be good job, Jimmy Trainer. I look. I don't think we. I don't. I'm on it. I. It's too much to unless there's. I think there's a there's something I found years ago where you could do like a tweet and then it would be on like different all the socials. If I could find something like that, which I'm sure is out right. there, someone right. hit me up on Twitter and tell me. Uh, but if not, I'll just be on Twitter. I think because. I don't. Elon Musk does seem pretty terrible, but like I don't care enough to like. Get well, that's off the thing. It. Like 
th- this might be a really, really stupid, stupid take, but I do think as weird, I mean, just downright weird as Elon Musk is and as horrible as he's been running Twitter, like, I just don't think Twitter's going anywhere. Well, also, like, for you, I don't know. I know, you know, I do the Twitter followers. I'd say you're at, right now, I'm going to go 68,000 followers. Something like that. Yeah. Can we look it up? We haven't done this in sure. a while. Right, I think see. it's like 70. Oh, what short change just as insulting. That's fine. It's right. the but 68, that's are... in the, well, that's, I mean, I think I get credit for 68. Jimmy Traina. Yeah, you're correct. 70.3. That's mm-hmm. uh, 68, I said. So yeah, if you have 68, that's, I mean, 70.3, thou, if 70.3 thousand, um, that's a lot of followers. If you go to threads, you're starting at zero. So I mean, right. like, I, right. so like for me, I've, I'm posting a little bit on threads, trying to build that up, but my okay, audience. But here's my question. Do you post anything on threads that you don't post on Twitter? Not yet. That does not happen. I just that's post like copy and paste. That's why I'm not going to bother with threads. But how about if threads replaces Twitter? Jimmy Train is at zero and then 70.3. Your life will be yeah. over. Career's over. I don't think I, I'm going to get 70.3 if I join threads right now. What did you say? I'm not going to get 70.3 if I join no, threads not, right no, now. No, but you got to start building it up. The more you post, being early is is actually helpful. You should get it. You should. I know it's kind of fun to say. You probably should have an account. I'll follow you. You should start uh, building it up a little bit because- I don't think Twitter, I kind of agree, but if it does go away, you kind of want to have, I don't know if it's important or not. I, I kind of, quite honestly, don't think it's important for your employer. I think yeah. it's pretty good for the individual, right. but I don't know if it helps your employer that much. We, You probably know the click rate. It's not that great, You generally speaking. And sometimes right. it's good on certain stories, but people don't generally click through, and it's kind of counterintuitive, too, when you think about it, because- they're scrolling and then they have to click through even if they like what you said. Right, right I do think all of that is true. I mean, it's, it's a fact that you can't dispute it. But I do think in the case of you and me, because of what we do in covering media, I think we have a lot of important or influential followers. And that to me, like I'd rather have you as a follower than five people who don't know the business because – yeah, There's you more can say cachet something. there. I agree. You say something that also catches the eye of quote important people. Um, right. And so, yeah, there is something to that. But again, does that help your company? It helps Jimmy Trainer. No. It helps me. Right. You know what I mean? I don't know if it helps the place you work for that much. It helps a little bit. Like there's cachet in it. And I do think that if you try to get another job, they're going to look to see how many followers you have. It's a dumb yeah. metric, in my opinion, right. in some right. words, but it's a metric that, um, that will be used. I agree. The best thing for me about Twitter is I can, I'll tweet things that I'm not going to put in my column. That's what I like about it the most. Like it's just an outlet for, cause you know, like for instance, that video of Jeter saying the Astros are the best team in the, in the American league. I'm not going to put that in my column because it's really Yankee specific and it's a national, but I can go on Twitter and then say, you know, Derek Jeter hates Brian Cashman. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I've been tweeting less. I mean, ever since, I mean, I definitely have been tweeting less. It's, I, yeah. it's unhealthy, the whole thing. And staying off of it is really much better. And I find when I do that, I'm happier. Um, yeah. Because you're just getting, ran- like, the other thing is the the for you thing. It's not really for me. Like I don't, I don't check that. Random. Yeah. Well, you just go. So, But doesn't it automatically go for you and you just click over to No, yourself? it goes to, like, what you last did. Like, if you're on, mine is always on following. It's right. never on for you. Yeah. Well, actually, let me ask you this. I just thought of it because I've been getting this question a lot. You, I know you reported Tiki Barber is going to do full slate of games for CBS. Jason mm-hmm. McCourty is going to do some games. Greg Gumbel is no longer doing play-by-play for CBS. Uh, do we know, is there going to be a replacement? They're going to bump someone up like Catalan, Aspiro, Adidas? Yeah, I think what- Catalan, yeah, I think Catalan probably gets the bump up. Um, but they still need to add a play-by-play person. Well, I mean, Tom because if McCarthy, Catalan replaces Gumble, well, someone yeah, needs to Tom replace. Yeah, Tom McCarthy has done a lot of games. I could Got see it. maybe he gets more games. I don't know that, yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah. I could see maybe Tom McCarthy getting more games. That's you. You, you put that on my radar. I'll look. At and you. as we're taping this here on July twelfth, what do you want to update your Brady to Fox meter? I know it caused a lot of trouble. I'm not you, doing that. I got to no? save that for Orand. But well, uh, let, me, uh, let me just ask this: Would you say at this point, will you go over fifty percent or under fifty percent? I was 
lastly, I th- I'm going to stick where I was. That the I'm going to go with the 49. Yeah, 49, what... 51. And wow, I'll say this: like, if you ask me, look, we were two things. Number one, that just blew up, and then I had to respond to him. You know, responding to oh yeah, because like, he responded on the SI Instagram yes. account. Yeah. So, so then I, I had a yeah. yeah. Then my boss called. They're like, "What's going on?" And so then I had to write a column explaining the whole thing, and I never reported anything. It's I have informed opinions. Like this isn't like out of thin air, and it's not defin- like forty nine to fifty one is not definitive by any stretch, and shouldn't be. Again, I don't want to sound like all these everyone who complains about aggregation, but anyways. It got blown out of proportion. So now I well, had you, a comment. But you're sticking by it now, saying 49.51. Well, I don't want to change, okay, at this point. Why not? Because I'll change on my own podcast. You don't feel like, okay, that's fair. But like, but you don't is, feel like, you're not getting a sense that from Brady over the last couple months that he's actually going to do this? More of, a, more of a sense, I should say. I will say this, and I've said this to people who are important. He's never going to say he's not doing it until he's not doing it. Okay. okay. He has a contract. That said, I very well may end up where I do feel like he'll do it at least for one year. That's again, that's where I was before okay. I changed it because I was 51 49. He's going to do it too much money one year. Okay. I do not believe he wants to travel. Um, I, I, I said what I said earlier. He, I don't think he wants to travel. I think what I, they kept offering more and more money. He said, no, no, no. Okay. Then it's a hedge. Now he's figuring it out. He did lose a lot of money in crypto. That I got to be honest. Now the meter, I don't, I can't just reveal the meter whenever you say, but the meter did move when I, you know, when I saw how much money he lost in crypto, he's got to make that money up. And people are like, hey, he's got to let plenty of money. People don't like to lose money, especially when they fly private and they live the, a life where you need a lot of things, you know, understandably because of who he is and how he has to live. He can't just walk right. down the street with your eye. Um, but uh, so the meter did move. It did move okay. towards it. So maybe okay. we're fifty. That's what, that's what I was. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. All right. I listen. I just saw. I just asked. So now SI can clip this, and then maybe Tom will comment and <laughs> get some love on the podcast. Uh, All right, Andrew. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming on, and uh, we'll talk to you down the road. Everyone, catch Andrew's work, New York Post, and of course the uh, Marshan and Oran podcast. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, man. <laughs> All right, joining me now, as he does every week for our Train of Thought segment from SNY TV in New York, WFAN in New York, July 24th. You can start hearing him 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. My buddy Sal Akata. Sal, how are you? I'm okay. How are you on this fine July evening? I'd say okay at best. What's going on? It's been a rough week. I, I have to say... So we taped two episodes two weeks ago, so we can, um, so we were able to have a full week off for the Fourth of July. And I never ever take a full week off. The only time I ever take a full week off is Christmas and New Year's. I never take it during the year, and I hate taping the podcast ahead of time. And I have to say, I missed doing the pod last week, like not taping one. I did miss it. Anything in particular, or just in general? What that you missed? Was there a reason why you I missed? Or just- I missed our segment. I missed, you know, giving the listeners a a podcast. Uh, You know, I, it was nice though. I mean, so I took the week off and there's a lot going on here. So I think I had mentioned on the pod, I was having major back pain. So yeah, I'm a mess. My, so it turns out my L5 is touching my S1, and there's supposed to be like no space. There's supposed to be a big space between those two, mm. I guess, vertebrae. There's no space. That's why I'm in agony. And the the doctor said, I have bad arthritis on my back. Gave me wow. steroids, which helped tremendously. I am so pro-steroids, it's not even funny. But my steroids have run out, so now I'm in pain again. And then on the 4th of July, I, um, I was... I got a hotel, went out east on Long Island, not out east, but Port right. Jeff, Long Island Hotel, going to do the beach, get to the hotel. I'm talking to my nieces and I'm telling them how it's a great day and the hotel's great and I can't wait. And as I'm saying how happy I am, I'm off for the week. I can't, blah, blah, blah. As I'm doing all that and unpacking the car, I slam my car door on my finger. Which, oh, yeah, you, you know, told me about on YouTube, that. YouTube, you could see. Yeah, it looks, it's looks disgusting. Gross. Yeah. yeah. And it's been in agony since then. Then I went to the doctor yesterday, 
And as if I don't feel old enough, as if I feel like life is not already over because I'm so old, he basically says, no ifs, ends, or buts. You need to get your first colonoscopy. So there's a lot going on here. Now, now why, though? Is there a reason Because you're supposed to get it at 45 years old. Yeah, but there's no reason for it? No, no, I don't have any. I don't have any problems. But right, so no, I'm, I'm you, under the. I, I operate where unless there's a problem, you ain't going no, in. No, 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 yeah. no, no. That's not how it works. You need uh, to get how, one when you turn 45. Nah, maybe you wait till you're 46. Maybe do okay. All right, not for uh, me. I'm just. I just don't. I have an issue with those things. No, I'm not saying it's smart. Well, what do you Obviously, think? I want to go get it. No, no, but I've well, seen people go through that. I'm not going through that. Not unless I have to. And even then, I don't want to do it. Just take me. Uh, That's I'll, it. Just, I'll, just I'll, I'll let your wife handle that one. Anyway, so there is a lot, a lot going on here. I'm going to get it. I'm not like you. I mean, if the doctor says you should get it at 45, time to get it, I'm going to get it. My bigger issue is my back because I don't know what they're going to do for that. So it's like, you know, I feel like no, a geriatric no, basically. Yeah. So, now I understand why you're, why you're just okay. It's a rough but, week. The beauty of it was because I was on the steroids last week when I was off, my back didn't hurt and I was able to do some things in between all the misery. So, you know, we did, I, like I said, hotel beach was great. Went to Smackdown at Madison Square Garden on Friday. How was I that? So I don't think I've been to a wrestling, a live wrestling show since I was probably in high school. So that long. Oh, yeah. I yeah. thought you take your nieces on occasion. My brother takes my nieces. I don't. Oh, yeah. I'll okay. tell you, it's a trip being there in person. I mean, it is. It's they they do a phenomenal, phenomenal job, and just being there with Roman Reigns just for his entrance and Seth Rollins, the crowd singing his theme song, leaving Madison Square Garden on the streets, everyone singing Seth Rollins' theme song. It was. Now, you know, did you drive or train? Train. You trained, okay. How was it getting out of there via train? Well, train in, ride home with my cousin. So you had the dream scenario. I had the dream scenario. We we talk about this. If we could figure out how to get train into the city, yep. car out of the city, we'd be billionaires. But they really, the WWE does a phenomenal job with the show. And I have to give one other shout out. Before we went to the Garden for SmackDown, they opened, I don't know if how familiar you are with this. You're not a big fat fuck like me but they open a raising canes in times square which is a chain in the south and it's all it is is chicken strips or chicken fingers mm -hmm. chicken strips whatever you want to call it. they don't have th their entire menu is chicken fingers french fries coleslaw and like a garlic toast there's nothing there's no burgers there's no nothing else on the menu okay. and i will say one of the best chicken fast food chicken places I've ever encountered uh, just on the chicken. The fries were mediocre, maybe even less than mediocre. Um, but the chicken was top notch. So shout out. To I have, I've never heard of it. I, I saw you either tweeted or Instagram it out. Um, so that's, I was like, Oh, I don't even know what the hell that is. So yeah. now I know. So now, you know, Times Square you've had it before down South or you only no, had no, it? I never had it. Oh, so this is your first. Okay. No, and it was a, my niece saw it on TikTok, so she wanted uh, to make sure she tried it, and I had heard cool. of it. They advertise a lot, like on a college football Saturday, you see them advertising a lot, but we never had it in New York. Better they just than opened like a month ago. No. Okay. Just oh, wait, no, Chick fil A, like, yes, better than Chick fil A. But what, not what's as good your favorite? As Popeyes. Wow. I'm not a Chick fil A like person. I, I think Chick fil A is completely overrated. Wow. Like Chick-fil-A to me Chick is fine. It's fine. Like I've not mine. had Popeyes. I've never had Popeyes, but Chick-fil-A is the best fast food chicken I've ever had. Well, by far. You've but you've never had Popeyes. Yeah, but. I so mean, your opinion it, is a little. Is it better than Chick-fil-A? No oh way. Oh, my God, yet. Yeah. Well, first of all, is that Ch it's way better. I, I, I can't argue about this. It's way better. Interesting. Everyone's going to. Everyone. I know people are going to say Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A. I know everyone goes crazy and has orgasms over Chick-fil-A. To me, it's fine. It's whatever. It's nothing <laughs> special. I love Popeyes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, that was my week. I will say, though, what was nice, didn't really have to deal with too much nonsense with the fireworks last week. It wasn't too bad at my house. I, just, I, did, I, didn't see, I didn't see one firework the entire week, but I heard a bunch of them. So, I didn't really, I tried not to pay that much attention to it. Luckily, the dog and the baby were fine. So, that's all that mattered. 
All right. So, and then this was another part of my week. So I'm all full week and I checked out for the most part in terms of news, social media. Now, listen, I'm not going to go a whole day without checking to see what's going on, but my Twitter use was as little as it has ever been. I mean, I would check it maybe three times a day just to see what's going on, was out of the loop on it. So I had no idea until you texted me. You broke the news to me about threads. Yeah. You texted me like, what's with this threads? And I had no idea what you were talking about. I knew once you didn't know that you were off the grid because obviously you would be <laughs> normal. You'd be on top of that. As a matter of fact, I think right. I got a tweet or a thread from someone saying, where's Jimmy? What's taking him so long? Somebody oh, really? somewhere said something like that. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so it took me a couple of days after the threads became this thing, I guess, because you had texted me. I didn't know what it was. I researched it, saw what it was. And then I went to see if I should start the threads account. And then I read something that said, so it links to your Instagram. And I read that if you want to, let's say in a couple months, delete threads, you can't, then you have to delete your Instagram account as well. Wow. So that made me hesitant to sign up. But so you signed up for threads. Yeah. Yeah. So I just have one simple question about this because I haven't really thought about it or spoken to anyone about it. I just have one simple question. Is anyone posting stuff on threads that they're not posting on Twitter? I mean, I think some people probably are. It's not like I'm following everybody. I would try to myself post a, a, something that is um, deemed as a tweet, but on threads and not tweet it out. Right. If like my thing is, if everyone is on threads posting something and then they put it on Twitter, what do I got to join threads for? Well, because ultimately Twitter is going to not be there and, you know, people are going to be on threads uh, only. Well, then, maybe. I'll si- then I'll sign up. Who knows? So are you yeah. enjoying threads? No, I'm not enjoying it. I'm just doing it as a fail safe in case somebody blows up my Twitter. Or I feel like I have a, an additional spot to it. That was That's the other thing way. about being off the grid because I really didn't get into it with you because when you asked me about threads and I didn't know what it was and I saw what it was, I wanted to be like, how are you asking me about threads when you hate Twitter more than anyone I know? Now you're signing up for another service. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just feel like it's at this point I, I need something. Not that I want it, but – and I don't even understand how it works necessarily, but it's nice to have another outlet just in case things go Got sideways it. with Twitter. Well, and the other thing I read is that your feed is not who you follow. It's everyone. That's what's annoying. That's why well, I can't stay on there all then day. Then I probably won't sign up for it because yeah. why on – the entire thing of why Twitter was phenomenal when it first started was because it was who you wanted to follow. Right. It's such a simple concept. Why does everyone have to go fuck it up? Right. I know. Well, it's and that, that became, right, oh, something close to people that you would like or promoted stuff. No. Like, no, I don't want to see it. I want to be able to pick my timeline. I get pissed when people do retweets into my feed. I shut off. You know, you can go to people's accounts yeah. and shut off the retweets. I do that all the time. I just want to see who I'm following. I agree. I agree with that. Meanwhile... I'm trying to relax, be checked out. You got me going on the, th- you, you're texting me about threads. I'm trying not to pay attention. And then I see all these, I, then when I check in, I'm seeing this story about Britney Spears and Victor Weapanyama. And I'm just like, what, what is going, what, you can't even, you can't take a break from social media because there's always something going on. That story. Now, I don't even, I don't even know what to believe in that. I saw it. I'm, I don't know if I'm buying it or not. So. Well, I just have one take on that story because it's old by now anyway. But like, I'm just shocked Brittany knew who he was. Yeah, and I don't get how he knew who she was either. Like, both no, he of didn't them. know who she was. I thought he said he knew who she was eventually. Well, maybe the security guard didn't because he slapped oh, her away. Okay. Yeah, and then there's denying that. I'm I'm not sure about the the whole thing. I can see how you wouldn't. Re- I know any time I've ever seen a celebrity in public, not that it's happened often, but whenever you do, you never think that that's the celebrity when you first see them. You go, is that so-and-so? I don't know if that's, it doesn't look, maybe it's that. Like, I could see, like, if, I don't know, if I'm in a Vegas casino and Britney Spears is walking by, I could think maybe, oh, that's Britney, but then maybe, like, but is it really? You know, you know like, I, I could see, but I don't know why the security and, guard has to get so physical. Well, you could see what she was saying, though, by she saw a tall athlete thinking, oh, who's this yeah. guy? And then somebody probably alerted to who it was. And then she said she wanted to go up to him and say congratulations. Um, but I'm not sure. Look, I don't know. 
I have a hard time thinking Brittany was going to go accost Wembenyana and his security guard. Right. Probably doing their job, but I don't know if she like, grabbed his waist or whatever. Who the hell knows? She tapped him on the shoulder. I saw the video. She like right. hit him on the shoulder. Oh, there is actually a video of it. I haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd she, how'd a- she tap him on the shoulder? Because he was walking, going up a flight of steps, and she was behind him, like, chasing him down. Like, hey, hey, it's me, Brittany. I want to say hi. How are you? And she, like, tapped him on the shoulder. And the security guard was you know, a little over. Here's the other thing, too. Like, the, let's say, it's, forget it's Britney Spears. Like, no one's attacking Victor Wembenyama, wherever they were, in a restaurant. I mean, calm right. down. Right. You don't need to just blindly smack Yeah, let's somebody. say it was a regular fan. Okay, so what's the fan going to do? He's going to ask for a stupid picture right. or something. Then you shoo him away. Right. But, um. I'm just shocked Brittany knew who he was. I, I want now, what I want to know now is Brit- Brittany's level of sports fandom. I don't know if she's a big sports. Who knows? Yeah. Are you does a big she, Brittany fan? Does she read SI.com? I mean, I'd like I, to know. I, I doubt it. Why don't you try to get her on the podcast? Well, how would she know who Victor Webb and yeah, I mean, she has to pay attention to ESPN or something to know no, who this saying, guy is. Somebody in her circle, she probably she said she saw him earlier in the day. Oh, 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 oh. And I saw, see. oh, who's that's, that guy? And then somebody it. said that's who it is. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Um, to answer your question, am I a big Britney fan? I mean, listen, back in the day, as a pop culture person, I mean, she was, you know, iconic. Right. And I, you know, she has, I would say, I'd say I have like five or six of her songs on the right. on phone. Yeah, I mean, I like her too, but and nothing in recent years, at least no, that I know of. No, no. Well, she's been going through a lot. Yeah. Um, Haven't we all? One sp- yeah. <laughs> this is a good time, though. One sports thing I just have to get off my chest. I mean, the Yankees and Brian Cashman continue to be just such a disgrace. Firing the hitting coach, really? That's your answer? You Year after year, you bring in players who either stink or get hurt. You cover up your mistakes because you have a $300 million payroll by just keep bringing in more players. And now you're going to blame the hitting coach. That is as Bush League a move as I've seen the Yankees do in a very long time yeah i don't have a big i don't have a big problem with it i mean they shouldn't have hired the guy to begin with he clearly wasn't getting whatever their lame message across is um i mean his his uh, summary of the yankees organizational hitting philosophy is hit strikes hard think of that the yankees have cracked the code hit strikes hard it's ridiculous but 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 the yankee hitting strategy is all determined by like what analytics say but that's that's what what i'm talking about right Hit strikes so, hard. Wow, they did so, it. So Sean Casey's going to come in and they're not going to use analytics? That's nonsense. They're going to use the same analytics. No, but he's going to get the message across better and be a guy who the players respect, a former major leaguer who was a good hitter. I don't buy it for a second. I don't buy it for one second. The hitting coach is not that relevant. The manager's barely relevant for the Yankees. Agreed. The hitting no, coach certainly is going to be relevant. It's just such a throw them under the bush, under the bus Bush League move. It's ridiculous. But Every, I don't think it's a big deal either way, to your point. like. Well, but the, the Yankee whole philosophy is all about like the analytics, the analytics, and the analytics say batting average doesn't matter, batting average doesn't matter. Now every Yankee hit is hitting 200, and now the batting averages matter. It's right. ridiculous. It's Cashman. Got to go. All right. Last Never going to happen. Yeah. Have you seen, because I just saw it today, the trailer – for the Netflix show, it starts on Wednesday. This pod's coming out Thursday, so you, people can watch it now if they're listening. On Netflix, quarterback that follows Mahomes, Kirk Cousins, and Marcus Mariota. It looks tremendous. I'm all in. I have not seen me the too. trailer, but I know about it. I'm excited to see it. See, to me, this is way better than a Hard Knocks because Hard Knocks, they're trying to do it in real time, and we know everything. This is like a recap of their seasons last year, and they have stuff right. we've probably never seen. But they released a four and a half minute trailer. Like I said, by the time you guys are listening to this, you can actually watch it on Netflix. And I don't know all the details or how many episodes or any of that stuff. Like I said, I've been out of the loop. But I saw the trailer four and a half minutes on Tuesday. And like you said, all in looks tremendous. Yeah, I can't wait for I'm curious if it's going to be something like my wife would be interested in. Because there's an element sometimes in these docs where it's like a crossover where it's not just about the sport. So maybe there's stories there that she would be interested in. So I'm curious to see how it uh, how it's going to play out. But I'm definitely more intrigued um, than Hard Knocks. Unless the Jets are in Hard Knocks. But overall, I'm more intrigued by this concept than Hard Knocks. I'm with Me you. too. I like now how every time I bring up a show, you try to figure out if your wife's going to be into it. I'm, get, yeah, I'm, well, getting, I'm getting the, the impression that there's a little trouble finding 
common show, shows in common. That's no, but household. that's one. Like, we're all looking for certain shows now. So I think that that could be one that maybe she's into it or not. If not, no big deal. I'll just watch it on my own. But it'd be, you know, two birds, one stone. Spend time with the wife and get to watch <laughs> the show that I actually want to watch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's going to sit there and be really into Marcus Mariota. Yeah, right. Well, I don't know. Did you watch anything good this week? I barely watched anything because, like I said, I was doing stuff. No, nothing that jumps out, uh, honestly. Yeah. Uh, this week, I mean, you know, Monday, Tuesday has been nothing with the the home run derby and now all star game tonight. No, nothing over the weekend of note. Mets and Yanks. That's basically it. And we haven't uh, gotten into that. I do want to watch some movies coming up. But I don't even know if there's anything good out in the movies. Um. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I know what 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 was the Tom Cruise movie that came out that everyone? Was, yeah, I'm on it. I just want to yeah. go to the movies in the summer. Indiana like Jones. Want. Yeah, that really doesn't yeah. do it for me yet at this Mission point. Mission Impossible, Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. Those are all big hand waves for me. Couldn't pay me to watch yeah, those. Right. <laughs> but I'm, I'm into a quarterback looks great. I'm looking forward to that. All right. Me too. All right. Um, we will read uh, reviews coming up in a couple of weeks. We got some good ones. So all we'll right. do that coming up. All right, Sal. We'll see you next week. Take it easy. All right. I'll talk right. to you later. All right. <laughs> All right, my thanks to Andrew Marshan and Sal Licata. If you missed any recent episodes of SI Media with Jimmy Trainer, go into the archives and check them out. Adam Shine from Sirius XM and CBS Sports Network was on a couple weeks ago. Brian Curtis from The Ringer, Scott Van Pelt, Chris Russo, Pat McAfee, all recent guests on SI Media with Jimmy Trainer. So go into the archives, give them a listen, and subscribe to the pod if you're not a subscriber, and lead, leave a review on Apple. We'll read it on an upcoming episode. All right, that wraps it up. We'll see you next week. Stay safe and take care.